Hi everyone, my name is Naomi and I am an assistant clinical psychologist and I work within the South West London and St George's Mental Health NHS Trust. My service is predominantly working with people with learning disabilities and mental health difficulties as well as neurodevelopmental disorders. But for today we'll be talking about general um, difficulties and mental health difficulties which people could face during the coronavirus. And I'll hand over to you, TK. Oh, hi, yeah. Um, my name is Tigis. I'm a social worker with mental health, adult mental health social worker. Um, um, I'm currently working in Kensington and Chelsea as a, in a placement, um, mental health placement team. My, my, my main role is working with people who are chronic and secondary, under second, second, secondary mental health. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we are both a part of a charity called Fanan. And Fanan in English means resilience. So Fanan is a charity for Eritrean youth and family and it's an outreach charity which people can access if they would like advice and information, counselling, advocacy, support, um, any kind of information that would help on their personal development and well-being, which is our newly developed charity which we have. So today we're going to be focusing on looking after your mental health during COVID-19 lockdown. And so we'll start off with the next slide. Let's see. So the first thing we're going to discuss is about advice, information and practicing self-care. So the most recent update from the government and the Prime Minister was changed from staying at home to stay alert. Although this doesn't mean that we should um, be going out too often or staying in too close proximity with people outside of our home, it still means that we need to be taking extra care and being quite alert and vigilant into what's going on around us. Um, so the main focus is staying alert, controlling the virus and saving lives. And I know this may seem like quite a pressing and alarming thing to hear. Um, so we're going to discuss how these sorts of advice can impact on the way people are feeling. Um, going through, first of all, and how you can look after yourself in terms of general advice and information that's been provided from charity sectors and the NHS and such like that. And going more towards mental health awareness and difficulties such as adjustment disorders, um, you know, any anxiety or depression people might be feeling during the situation. And then the next section we'll be talking about is a more crisis intervention. Um, and TK will also be discussing more of the kind of um, social information such as financial advice that can be provided um, and all the help that's out there in terms of finances or in terms of any other information that people need generally. So we're going to the next one. So the important thing to understand is that taking care of your mind is just as important while you're staying at home due, due to the coronavirus pandemic. Um, it's normal to have feelings such as exacerbated emotions um, throughout this time, such as anxiety or stress. These could be to do with your finances or the feeling of loneliness, um, not being able to see people face to face and only being able to talk to people on the phone and just sort of virtual interactions and seeing people on the screens. And just a sense that you really want to perhaps see someone face to face, which is normal, of course, um, or being worried about yourself and your family. Um, so it's very important to have access to practical information and tools which will aim to build our resilience. So Fanan, Fanan is called resilience, um, and our mental health well-being. So from the Every Mind Matters um, Foundation website, they provided a lot of useful advice on things that we can do to help to maintain healthy whilst being at home. Um, and advice has been attached below and these, um, this information will be able to be accessible for everyone who's able to view this. Uh, all the information will be provided down below and we will also provide a PDF document which people will have access to. Uh, but the general information that's outlined within the Every Mind Matters guidance document um, includes about finding out about your employment and benefit rights, practical planning practical things such as your household supplies and 
you know, being able to effectively gain your medicines or, you know, food shopping or anything essential that you need. Um, ways in which you can stay connected with your family and friends, which is very important um, in order to keep healthy within ourselves and look after our, you know, well-being. Um, also access to talking about your worries, such as NHS recommended helplines, which are provided in the document. Uh, information and advice on regular exercise and looking after your body. Um, limiting exposure to COVID-19 news. You know, if we keep looking at too much news around coronavirus, it might be quite you know, daunting in our brains. And in our minds, we might feel like this is really a drastic, difficult time. And, you know, that's something that will just take up our thoughts again and again, and something that will be difficult to get into a healthy routine. So limiting exposure is really important. Just being aware of the important things and the outlined information would be enough. Um, also focusing on things that you enjoy is outlined in the document, your hobbies, picking up new hobbies maybe, um, and keeping your mind active. Taking time to relax, which is breathing exercises as well, or you could just sit down, relax, read a book, have a coffee or tea. Um, maintaining a regular sleep pattern and eating healthy and well is also very important. Our body sort of thrives on routine and predictability. Um, otherwise, it could be quite up and down. We one day if we have quite a good sleeping pattern, um, you know, and the next we might not be able to. So that can be quite difficult for our body to get used to and then that can affect our thoughts and our feelings and our mind. So being able to maintain a regular sleep pattern would be quite good. So I've attached a video and this was obtained from the Southwest London St. George's Insight website. Um, so where I work, they've just provided a video on aerobic exercises. This is something that can also be accessed through this YouTube link. Um, if you'd like to access that, you can copy and paste it or you can access it from the document below and do this. It's just about 12 minute exercise, so a warm up and then a general exercise, which is very helpful. And this can be done quite often. Um, so, yeah, don't feel like it has to be done once or twice. You can keep doing it. It would be very helpful. So the next thing we'll discuss is the Mental Health Foundation. So these cha two charities, Mental Health Foundation, uh, which is now celebrating 70 years, which is amazing, and MIND, which is for better mental health. The Mental Health Foundation have created specific information on how you can look after your mental health during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so the link is also attached to this as well. But the general advice they provide is advice while working. Um, also advice while working from home, because a lot of people might find it difficult adjusting to working from home now. So that information is provided on how to be able to effectively do that. Advice on staying at home, uh, advice for parenting. Some parents might be feeling a bit anxious during this time, especially now I think, um, you know, schools will be opening quite soon and information and guidance and support along that would be quite helpful. Um, I believe it's primary schools that start on the 1st of June, but everything is just in a transition right now. So it's really good to have that sort of support while things are transitioning. Information on loneliness and finances and more. And the Mind Mental Health Charity have also put together useful resources for staying home, such as taking care, ways to take care of your mental health well-being, and support for work and benefits and housing and such. And the link is also attached. So this is just a screenshot from the Mental Health Foundation. So it just shows the amount of information that they can provide, such as mental health tips tips while working, looking after your mental health and well-being while staying home, change such as loss and bereavement. Um, you know, it's inevitable that some people would have experienced some loss at this time. And um, having support for that is very crucial and the information and guidance through that is attached here. Um, living with a pandemic, if you already have mental health problems, so some people might have already diagnosed mental health disorders such as anxiety, depression, psychosis, anything like that. If you're already struggling with that and you've already had a sort of maintained routine, perhaps with your therapist, which is face-to-face, -face, um, and things changing, becoming more virtual over the phone or over the laptop, there's kind of support on how you can look after yourself during that sort of change and adjustment um, to your normal treatment plan. Um, also, parenting during the coronavirus outbreak, uh, loneliness during the coronavirus, especially 
for people who live alone and you know they're not able to see people and it's quite difficult for them there's that support for that coping with the coronavirus a guide for young people um it's very helpful for people who are under 18 if they would like some some support and guidance on that as well and um, nurturing our relationships during the coronavirus pandemic how we can all stay connected and you know keep our relationships going so also the sari also the sari and borders nhs mental health foundation trust have developed a virtual interactive hub so this is a kind of coronavirus well-being hub for people anyone that can register and join a number of sessions so if you join you click on the website you can join the virtual hub you can find a session so from this screenshot you can see that there's a mindfulness session there's also a fitness session there's also quite a few others such as walking and talking session um, some more exercise sessions sessions just for tea and coffee and a break and a chat with people and many others many others that you can have a look for and see what works best for you and that provides more of that inclusion for people especially for people struggling with loneliness they can have access to this and you know it'd be very helpful for them to feel part of you know a community with everyone else so I'll hand over to TK, who's going to discuss about the coronavirus and local authorities and community support. Uh, yes, um, um, my, um, the, the bit that I'm going to present will be the practical solutions for um, the problem that we have at the moment. And this information, I'm not a, a benefits specialist, but this, is, this information is available for social care staff and NHS staff to signpost for the client that they work with. So, uh, so what is available? Um, um, I mean, I think the way uh, co local communities are organized has been fundamentally impacted by COVID-19. So local authorities and community organization are working around the clock to ensure that the residents can access local support that they need in, in, in a way that's suitable for them. So many councils have now set up a community support hubs bringing together community and uh, community council and community supports uh, to uh, support the residents. Uh, okay. So, um, so when, so one of them, uh, um, the solution was to set up a COVID-19 hubs, which is, which these hubs are set up in each local authority. So, um, around um, London, I'm talking about London, and probably around the country. So this, um, the hubs are set up. So if, if set up in London, let's say it's in Brent, so your local authority within Brent or will will give you all the information for that local authority. If it's in West London or in Hammersmith, will be. So you, ha you have to approach each local authority for specific um, information for that local information. Um, okay. So, um, but the local authority, um, such a duties, uh, child and um, adult social care provision continue as before. So it hasn't stopped. So if you're struggling with child care, um, child care support, I mean, neglect or abuse, or all, all these statutory uh, duties for children and as an adult, meaning if you have a physical health problem or if you have a mental health problem and that is um, impacting on your day-to-day -day activity. So it, the first contact would be the social care or social or local authority in your, in, your, um, in your area. That hasn't changed. Okay, uh, so I know the, the, the main um, difficulty people are facing is a financial hardship. So I'm focusing on uh, benefits and what's available. Um, the first point of contact for um, any difficulties arising from COVID-19 will be, of course, a local um, benefit agency on the phone and citizen advice bureau. Citizen advice bureau are um, providing advice on, on the phone and online. And I know um, from 6th of April, um, the universal credit um, has increased to the standard allowance and the basic element of work, working tax credit of £20 um, a week for, for one year. I think this is during the COVID uh, period. And the other um, 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 update is sickness and disability benefits, which is if someone is, if, if you're on uh, getting employment support allowance or universal credit and unable to work because of the illness and disability, will not be able to, um, will, will, they don't have to provide 
worldwide fit, um, fitness uh, what, a GP note or what they call um, fit note. Or if you're on isolation, you don't need a note from NHS 11 or like, triple one one, yeah. <laughs> and, and I know local authorities always had this, um, what they used to be called social fund, uh, local support payment. And, and some of it can be used for COVID um, issues. And I know uh, some of the, the funding has been used. I know there's a new uh, um, fund as, as well called um, COVID-19 hardship fund, which will be able to support people who are struggling to pay their council tax. Uh, it's a discretionary payment, so you have to contact your local authority for that. So, um, the other um, aspect of uh, this hardship um, payment would be um, if you're struggling to pay your bills, your gas, electricity, and other bills. Um, so the, it's, it's been set up for um, the, the provider to review your uh, bill, pay, bill payment plans, including debt repayment plan, or having a break or deduction for how much um, how much you can pay and they can give you greater, longer time to pay with, um, in some cases, I mean, it give you more time. And, and I think that um, for sure, no credit meters will be disconnected during this period. And, and I know, um, we, I think we've, it's been on the news a lot in media that domestic violence have gone up quite a lot during this period. So, um, the national, um, there's a national 24 hours national domestic abuse uh, helpline is on the, on the slide, so we'll be able to get that. And, and I know, uh, especially with all the um, older people who haven't had any visits, uh, there's a lot of issues with loneliness and isolation, so I probably, Finan is one of the, the charity organizations that will be able to provide that uh, telephone contact. Um, Food banks, um, um, food banks, um, I know uh, food banks are managed usually locally, but Red Cross, Edge UK for all their clients, Self, uh, Salvation Army, and many local charities are, um, have, um, have uh, food to provide and uh, some, some, in some cases to deliver at home. So this information is available from Citizen Advice Bureau and each local authority will have this information. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, TK. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to move on to the next section, with, which is if you're worried about your mental health during the coronavirus outbreak. So the coronavirus, the COVID-19 outbreak, is affecting the way many of us live our lives. Um, it's normal that it could affect our mental health, um, and you definitely wouldn't be alone in this feeling. Um, so if you are worried about your mental health during the COVID-19 pandemic, the Samaritans charity, which is a well-established charity for supporting people with mental health difficulties, um, they've produced a support content, content to help you during these times, um, and the information would be attached below. So in terms of awareness, you know, uh, Previously, I was discussing about advice and information and tips and self-care and how to look after yourself during this time um, in order to prevent, you know, additional difficulties. Although this general advice and information and tips are quite helpful and good for keeping our minds healthy throughout this time, it's really important to also acknowledge that you can be aware and be aware of certain instances whereby you might feel it's difficult to alleviate these difficulties just by following general advice such as eating well, sleeping well, doing exercise, taking rests, keeping in contact with friends and family. If those, if you've done all of those things and you find yourself, you know, have done those things since the start of lockdown, which I believe was two months ago, and you still feel a sense of really hard difficulties, um, it's really important to acknowledge that this is also normal. And there is help out there in terms of that. Um, so you may notice symptoms which are really difficult to manage or perhaps may be quite difficult to make sense of. And this can lead to everyday day-to-day -day tasks becoming really difficult to cope with. So there is a, a model which is quite useful way of thinking um, in terms of how, how to manage our feelings. So this is called the control, influence and accept model. So some situations we're able to control, some we can influence, and some we cannot control. So in the case where we have no control, 
such as the COVID-19 pandemic and situation that we find ourselves in now, the acceptance is the most helpful stance or the first step in terms of, you know, gaining a um, healthy mind and a healthy mindset and behaviours. So it doesn't mean you like this sort of situation because of course, I'm sure a lot of us would not like the sort of situation that we are in now or that you haven't tried your best to change the situation. But it just allows you to free up your mental and emotional resources that you already have within you in order to, to develop a more healthy and, you know, a healthy way of um, coping with these difficulties and, you know, changing difficult behaviours or unhelpful behaviour behavior patterns. <laughs> um, okay, so the difficulties with adjustment. So during this pandemic, you might feel some sorts of difficulties with adjusting to the way things have changed because a lot of things have changed now. The way that we work, uh, the way that we are in contact with our friends and families, um, many different things, even job loss um, and in worst case scenarios, bereavement and loss of family and friends. So adjusting to that, um, you know, that transition is really important to be aware of. The adjustment disorder is a short-term condi condition which follows a stressful life event such as COVID-19. So this can cause you to have a stress responses which may include sadness, the loss of interest in work or activities, feelings of hopelessness and sleep difficulties. It's very important to be aware that these are based on adjustment difficulties and have been found to subside following the duration of the situation. So, and the symptoms of these would last for no longer than six months after the event has occurred. So these are just situational difficulties. These would just occur for now. Um, and once this coronavirus situation has been over, um, you know, research has found that the symptoms won't last for too long after. So it's also very important to know or to be able to identify when you might need some therapeutic intervention or support, further support. So if you're experiencing symptoms that affect your daily routine within the three months of the stressful event of COVID-19, that's the first uh, identifier of being, you know, identifying whether you might need some further support. Um, and if you're noticing heightened stress, stress levels, which may not be usual in response to a stressful trigger such as COVID-19. So particularly if they would impact on your relationships or your ability to function while you work or at home. Um, also, if you spend a lot of time thinking and ruminating about COVID-19 and the implications of that. So these are the three key identifiers to acknowledge of when you might potentially be benefit from additional you know, support and therapeutic support. So, we're going to discuss about situational anxiety. So the feeling of anxiety is a stress response and it might cause quite intense feelings of fear. Um, so one type of adjustment disorder is this situational anxiety. So the symptoms can differ from person to person and the severity and duration can also differ from person to person as well. Um, but also referring back to the previous slide, which is the three identifiers, and if you find yourself, you know, mainly um, feeling those three um, in turn with these symptoms of, of um, anxiety, then it may be that you might be feeling difficulties um, such as an adjustment disorder. So the symptoms could include nervousness, feeling really nervous, quite irritable, fatigue, so feeling really tired, um, a lot of worries and fears really low self-esteem, um, perhaps even shaky hands, um, which is a physiological response, your body's physiological response to that stress and trigger, which is coronavirus, um, potential headaches, muscle tensions, chest pains, sweaty palms, a really fast, rapid heartbeat, shallow breath or breathing or sweating. So you may potentially not experience all of these symptoms, but you may experience the majority of them or the severity, the severity could be very high from the amount that you experience of these and the duration could be quite long as well. So the next uh, type of adjustment disorder we'll talk about, we will be discussing is situational depression. So here's another type of adjustment disorder and the symptoms can also 
vary from person to person and the severity can also vary. These can include sadness, feeling of hopelessness, um, a lack of enjoyment in your general activities, regular crying, constant worrying and sort of stress, sleep difficulties, disinterest in food, really trouble focusing. So perhaps if you work from home or if you're still um, working as a key worker, you might find it difficult to focus on the work that you're doing. Um, trouble carrying out daily activities, a feeling of being really overwhelmed, avoiding social situations and interactions. So even though we're not able to have those general interactions where we can have face to face and see people in person, you might feel the need to avoid telephone calls or avoid any sorts of virtual interactions that you might be having. Um, not taking care of significant matters such as paying your bills um, or engaging effectively with work. Um, it's another symptom and um, perhaps even suicidal ideation so thoughts of suicide and you know really down and hopelessness and kind of feelings so there are interventions such as therapies which are available to support those who are experiencing those symptoms um, and these are available remotely so you are able to you know, have um, those remote interactions with a therapist, talking over the phone or over the computer, sorts of virtual interactions. Um, so talk, types of talking therapies, they are psychological treatments for mental health and emotional problems such as stress, anxiety, depression. There are many different types. They will involve working with a trained therapist, could be one-to-one -one remotely, uh, in a group remotely as well. Um, and definitely be, you know, could be online, over the phone. Um, with family and partner. So this therapist would help you to find answers to the problems you've been having. Um, for some problems and conditions, one type of talking therapy might be better than the other, but we'll discuss the different types. Um, so yeah, different types of talking therapies would suit different people. And this is obtained from the NHS WK. So when you're also able to self-refer yourself so the service will um, contact you someone from psychological therapy service will get in touch with you to ask about the problems you're having if, when you self-refer on the website there are the links available to do that and once you've done that someone from the service will get in touch with you uh, you'll be recommended a type of talking therapy that would be um, you know appropriate for you um, it will depend on the problems you're experiencing, how severe they are, um, and yeah, there's all of those information that's available on the NHS website. So the different types of talking therapies include cognitive behavioural therapy. So the aim of cognitive behavioural therapy is to help you explore and change how you think about your life and free yourself from unhelpful patterns of behaviour. And this type of therapy is actually very well established um, and it's been found to be very helpful for treating both depression and anxiety. So this specific type of therapy is good for both depression and anxiety, including more adjustment disorders and situational types. Um, so you'd be setting goals for your therapist and you can carry out, you'll be carrying out tasks between sessions and the sessions can involve between 12 to 20, 20, 12 to 20 sessions or they could be less or perhaps more, but everybody is different. Um, the most important thing is, you know, acknowledging the first step in the first session and the therapist guiding you through that and giving you information about what to expect from it. And you can ask many questions. So this one is very well established and helpful. The next one is a more um, guided self-help one. So you can do this on your own. It's a guided self-help is recommended treatment for depression and anxiety. With guided self-help, you can work through cognitive behavioural therapy-based workbook or computer course with the support of a therapist remotely. Uh, the therapist can work with you to understand your problems and make positive changes in your life. And um, guided self-help can also aim to give you helpful tools and techniques so you can carry on after the course is finished. So that's very helpful in terms of, you know, the more exercise-based therapies such as cognitive behavioural therapy. And guided self-help you're able to obtain those skills and apply them even after um, your, your course is finished or you know, therapy sessions are finished and so very helpful for the future as well another one is also called mindfulness-based cognitive therapy 
Um, mindfulness is uh, based on uh, meditation. So mindfulness-based therapies help you focus on your thoughts and your feelings as they happen moment by moment. Um, and these ones can be really helpful to treat depression. Um, and it combines the mindfulness techniques, meditation sorts of techniques, um, and breathing exercise and techniques with a more cognitive uh, type of therapy. So there are charity helplines which you can access, such as and if you're struggling with anxiety, you can access Anxiety UK. Um, and the phone number is provided open from Monday to Friday and Saturday to Sunday. Also Calm. Uh, Calm is a campaign for men as well, for men aged 15 to 35, um, campaigning against living miserably. Um, the phone is also attached. They're accessible daily and also from 5 p.m. to midnight. Um, Mind is also a charity which can be quite accessible. Their helplines attached. Um, and these sorts of charities are very helpful if you find yourself um, requiring extra support and just in terms of another avenue or an alternative to, to get to. And there are also apps if there are a lot of people who like using their phones, tablets, laptops. Um, uh, these apps include Worry CBTI Coach, ISO, Silver Cloud. Uh, many of these are very helpful and found to be very helpful for managing symptoms of worry. Um, CBDI is good for sleep, helping your sleep routine and sleep environment. Um, worry Tree helps you to take control of worry wherever you are, helps you create an action plan for managing your worry. Um, and the good things about apps are that they are accessible and you can use them wherever, they, wherever you are. I'm sure many of us have our phones a lot of the time, so that can be accessed whenever you feel like you need to. And ISO's online course uses instant messaging for people with mental health difficulties and it's a confidential service that puts you in touch with a therapist. Silver Cloud also online course to help you manage stress, anxiety and depression. You can work through a series of topics selected by a therapist to address specific needs. Uh, and it's an eight week course by Silver Cloud designed to be completed in your own time and at your own pace. So there's no pressure, no time constraint, no limits, um, all at your own you know, comfort and at your own pace. And more are also available from the link that I provided below. Uh, following on for apps, there's also an app from Every Mind Matters for expert advice and practical tips to help you look after your mental health and well-being. Just Breathe is also a good app um, where you pause for a minute and try to breathe and have that sort of mindfulness-based intervention and exercise. Sidekick, so you can engage in health, improving tasks and exercises, world walking, exploring amazing world whilst taking some exercise, which is also very good. Headspace, um, which is also based on mindfulness. So it's looking at a section of weathering your storm and trying, you know, basic courses or two week free trials. Also the apps that I had listed and suggested, those are all free. So there's no worries in terms of having to pay for them. You can just automatically download it and not have to worry about the prices of those. So the last section I'm going to cover is in terms of crisis intervention. Crisis intervention is if you ever feel that you're on a, your brink of a mental health, de mental health decline or are really struggling. Um, it's really important to know that there are crisis support services out there that can be of help and you're not alone in this. And the NHS website outlines how we can access urgent mental health support. Um, so yeah, it's very important to know that support is available even if services seem to be really busy at the moment due to the COVID-19. Um, if you just need to talk any time of the day or night, there are free listening services. Uh, so these services offer confidential advice from trained volunteers. You can talk about anything that's troubling you, no matter how difficult it is. Um, so you can call 116123 to talk to Samaritans. Um, and you can also text the word SHOUT to 85258 and contact a SHOUT crisis text line or text YM if you are under 19. If you are under 19 you can also call the 0800 1111 to talk to Childline and the number will not appear on your phone bill. 
Okay, so there's, there's always that confidentiality if you have any fear or anxiety in terms of the implications of calling the number, it won't appear um, as a record. Um, there are also NHS urgent mental health helplines uh, for people of all ages. You can call for 24 hour advice and support for you or your child or your parent, someone that you care for. Help to speak to a mental health professional and assessment will be done to help decide on the best course of care for you. Um, and you're also able to find your local NHS urgent mental health helpline because there is a lot out there. And it's really important to um, be able to know your local one that can help you um, help you to know. Um, so, yeah. And getting advice from NHS 111 or asking for an urgent GP telephone consultation if, you're, if you are unable to speak with your local NHS urgent mental health helpline or if you're really unsure of what to do. And the really crucial thing to know is that you should um, be able to call 999 if someone's life is at risk or if they're seriously injured themselves or perhaps they've an overdose or in terms of yourself, if you don't feel that you can keep yourself safe or you can keep someone else safe. Thank you so much um, for listening to our presentation. We hope it's been really useful. Um, I know there's a lot of information to kind of take in. And so we'll definitely have information on the PDF, which can be provided and people can look through. Um, and you can also refer back to this um, video if you'd like to just refresh your memory and everything that we've discussed today. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. What about you? Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. This is what our community in the UK needs right now. Timely and comprehensive. Thank you, TK. Thank you, Naomi. can't wait to listen to the next episode of Men Health and Social Care Professionals. In the meantime, my dear community, protect yourself, loved ones and community during this lockdown. See you on the next episode. In the meantime please share. Subscribe. If you like this content click the like button. Thank you.